Hi, welcome to a new episode of History in Seven Facts, the show that aims to explore some interesting episodes of humanity's past. Check out this playlist to watch the entire series, and don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one. World War II was a bloody mess, literally. The world came very close to be conquered and dominated by a raging, anti-Semitic and genocidal regime. It took a lot of effort and sacrifice to defeat Hitler and his armies. But there's one fact that is rarely talked about, one that was probably most responsible for the Allied victory. The secret remained hidden by Churchill's orders for another generation and nobody knew about it for a long time. This is the story of the Enigma machine. The German supply ships that crossed the Mediterranean Sea in 1941 and 1942 were on constant alert. The success of Erwin Rommel and the African campaign depended on these supply ships, without which the Germans couldn't defeat the British 8th Army. These sailors were on constant alert, like some hunted animals, and for good reason. The Allies knew just as well how important these supply ships were, and they were determined to destroy them. The skies were covered with warplanes, the seas with submarines. The Germans calculated that in order to cross the Mediterranean Sea to North Africa, their ships would have to face 400 submarines, guided by God knows how many reconnaissance planes, based in Malta. But this couldn't be further from the truth. This massive fleet in reality was made up of 3 planes and 25 submarines. 2.5 million square kilometers of sea, patrolled by a handful of ships and planes. And yet, the German supply ships were target practice for the Allies. How? During the war and 30 years after it ended, this was the most guarded secret of the Allied forces. The ease with which the German supply ships were destroyed had nothing to do with Malta or any other Allied base. It wasn't strategy either, nor was it luck. The people that granted the army such victories were themselves far from being military men. In fact, they were often ridiculed and considered cowards and even deserters. But these guys greatly shortened the war, and without them an Allied victory was definitely not certain. They fought the war not on front lines, but in humble huts in Bletchley Park in Buckinghamshire. Their weapons were logic, instinct and imagination. Led by the brilliant mathematician Alan Turing, this team managed to crack the uncrackable codes of the German Enigma machine. This machine produced 17,576 different cryptid alphabets and the code was changed with every push of a button. Naturally, the Germans considered their machine to be invincible, so they kept using it to send secret messages. Little did they know that Turing's small team was now able to read those messages. Even though this piece of intel was vital and saved the lives of countless soldiers and civilians, nobody knew about it for decades. It was only in 1975 that survivors of the war found out about Turing's contribution to the victory. The foundation of their endeavor started in Eastern Europe in 1930. Three Polish mathematicians, Marian Rejewski, Jerzy Rodzicki and Henryk Zygalski, were recruited by the Polish army to analyze German coded messages. Poland's position, sandwiched between Stalin's Soviet Union and Hitler's Germany, led them to use their secret services to the max. They received an unexpected help in 1929, when a German package was accidentally sent to Poland. Alerted by a border clerk, the Polish authorities opened the package and found a functioning Enigma machine. This was not the military type, but a commercial one, but still it was a valuable asset. The Polish examined it in details, then carefully repacked it and sent it to its destination. And so it happens that the Polish managed to rebuild a perfect replica of this commercial Enigma machine, without the Germans ever knowing. 
This version was different from the one used by the military, but with a little inspiration and a lot of math, Marian Rajevsky managed to arrange all the connections and was able to decrypt some messages. The German messages always started with the parameters needed to decrypt them, so the Polish scientists were able to identify various patterns. However, by the end of the decade, the Enigma machine became much more complex, and in the end, Rajevsky and his team had to admit defeat. They were no longer able to decrypt any messages. In July 1939, sensing the approaching war, Polish authorities handed over their Enigma replicas, along with their research, to the French and British. A decade's worth of research gave Alan Turing and his team a head start in their assault on the Enigma. Turing and his team managed to take this research further and were able to crack the Enigma. The capturing of a German submarine in the Eastern Mediterranean was a stroke of luck. A book containing various Enigma codes was found on board. Thus, by the end of 1942, the Allies were able to read every single coded message. But now, there was another problem. How could they use this knowledge without the Germans suspecting that their machine was useless? The Germans were absolutely convinced that their code was uncrackable, even after their ships started to sink one by one. If they would ever start doubting their codes, they would immediately change it. Per month, the Bletchley team were decrypting up to 90,000 messages, so their influence on the war was immense. American and Soviet troops were also benefiting from their intel, although the Russians got only a handful of information, so they would think they were the result of traditional espionage. The successes of the Allies in the Atlantic and the Mediterranean changed the course of the war and allowed for a quicker D-Day. We can't know for sure how long the war would have lasted if it weren't for the Bletchley team, but it is estimated that without their intel, World War II would have lasted an additional two, maybe even three years. That means that literally tens of millions of people were saved from certain death. Plus, it's more than likely that the Americans would have dropped their first atomic bomb on Berlin, not Hiroshima. The impact of Turing's and Rajevsky's research cannot be underestimated. But just how did the Enigma machine work? First, there's the book that contained the codes. Every day had assigned a different set of characters, so the encryption varied from one day to another. When the operator pressed a key, a character would light up on another keyboard. These characters were then written down one by one. The Enigma machine could also be used in reverse to decrypt a message provided you had the correct decoding information. Inside the machine there were rotors, each with independent circuits. Whenever a key was pressed, the rotors would turn and register the character differently. Each branch of the military used different sets of codes, so intercepting their messages were crucial in order to find the correct patterns. At first, it took Turing weeks to decrypt messages. By the end, it took only a few hours. Each message contained the rotor's parameters to be used, the date, some colloquial information, maybe about the weather, which were actually clues related to the cipher. Only within the message, somewhere in the middle, there were vital informations about orders and true positions. To understand just how complex this encryption was, think about this. Turing and his team had to invent a completely new machine, one that's regarded today to be the first computer, the Colossus, with which they could test different possible solutions at a rate of 5000 characters per second. The cracking of the Enigma was crucial to Britain's survival. Before this, over 1,000 supply ships in the Atlantic were sunk by the German U-boats. Once the German messages were decoded though, the Allies had precise information about the U-boats' courses and orders. But they couldn't use this information entirely because they would have given away their secret. So instead of destroying the submarines, they avoided them by using different routes and then targeted their supply ships. 
In May 1943, they went on the offensive and managed to destroy one third of the German fleet. The story was that the British invented a new type of radar that worked underwater. By the summer, the Germans pretty much gave up their fight in the Atlantic. They were taking too much damage and could no longer sink convoys. In the Mediterranean, the situation was reversed. Here, it was the Germans that were sending supply ships to North Africa. These ships were surveyed by three airplanes that took off from Malta. They received their orders directly from Bletchley Park. So it wasn't so hard to find the ships. In order to keep their secret safe, every German ship had to be destroyed only and only after an airplane spotted it. The pilots would then relay a false, easily interceptable message about the ship's position, pretending that a wave of bombers would follow their message. This way, the Germans were fooled to think that the Allies had a huge squadron at their disposal. And it worked. The Germans were defeated, never knowing what actually defeated them. Unfortunately, the genius behind this success, Alan Turing, was never fully recognized in his home country during his lifetime due to his homosexuality, which was then a crime in the UK. Turing was prosecuted in 1952 for homosexual acts. He accepted chemical castration treatment as an alternative to prison. He died in 1954 due to cyanide poisoning, most likely an intentional one. Today, Turing is widely considered to be the father of theoretical computer science and artificial intelligence and is responsible for saving millions of lives. Thank you for watching this episode of 7 Facts. I hope this was interesting and informative and maybe it even inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you liked this video, please thumbs up and subscribe. While you're downstairs, let me know what you think about this video. Please consider visiting my Patreon page and become a patron. The link is in the description. I hope to see you next time. Bye.